Hello, my friends. It's your buddy Phil here, Project Management Trainer and Coach. Welcome to 40 Days to PMP Exam Success. We're about to go on another adventure, and it's day nine. Day nine, we're going to be talking about collaborate with stakeholders. There are three enablers we've got to talk about, and they start with evaluate, optimize, and build trust. Evaluate the engagement needs, optimize alignment, and build trust and influence. So we're going to talk about these right away. All right, so let's get rolling. It's a journey. You know how it's been these number of days. I normally talk to you when I'm on the road, and you could learn a lesson from how I approach my training. I approach my training in such a way that as soon as I get a moment to talk to you, I am talking to you. I am using every waking moment to align thoughts, to align ideas, and to really hammer down on what needs to be done. And there are 35 things that need to be done as you're studying for the exam. And the question is, are you hitting the days just like I am, right? Because it's hard. Life comes at you. I've got my real job to do, right? I've got other family responsibilities just like you have. So how are you maximizing your day to put in the time and the effort to do what needs to be done? One of the ways you can do it is using audio. You could use audio to get ahead in your studying. But anyway, let's talk about collaborate with stakeholders. You gotta understand that collaborate means you are working together, you are communicating, and you are working in such a way that it ends up in the best outcome for the project. So which process do you think this is in the world of predictive? In the world of predictive, this is actually managed stakeholder engagement. It's that simple. So in managed stakeholder engagement, you are specifically communicating and working with stakeholders. In the world of agile, you already know the Agile Manifesto said business people and developers should work together daily throughout the project. That's the key thing. You're working together continuously. So the whole concept of collaborating is very easy to see in the world of Agile. Another Agile Manifesto snippet says business people and developers should work together daily. And then it says collaborating is more important than negotiating you know, or valued more than negotiating, right? That's what the Agile Manifesto tells us. So we value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Collaboration is huge, all right? So the very first enabler says evaluate engagement needs for stakeholders. So how much engagement does a stakeholder need? What type of engagement does a stakeholder need? The answer to this could be a stakeholder needs face-to-face -face collaboration and engagement. Or maybe it is a stakeholder needs email collaboration. And that's what works for them. Anything else you're doing may not work for them. See what I'm saying? So you as a project manager, you need to assess what works best for each stakeholder, especially the key stakeholders. All right, and that's what PMI means when they say evaluate engagement needs for stakeholders, because it's gonna vary, it's gonna differ. Now, one of the things you wanna use in the world of traditional is the SEAM. I call it the SEAM, S-E-A-M, and that's Stakeholder Engagement Assessment Matrix. Remember, the Stakeholder Engagement Assessment Matrix breaks down categories of stakeholder current dispositions. So I use the mnemonic earns less, U-R-N-S-L. It's a play on words. U is for unaware, R is for resistant, N is for neutral, S is for I've blanked out, can't remember what S is. I'll remember in a little bit. L is for leading, no, S is for supportive. You see, 
that's the value of a mnemonic if you've got a mnemonic just like I self-corrected now you'll be able to do that without a mnemonic I couldn't see what I'm saying so you got to use your mnemonic you got to self-correct when you need it anyway the stakeholder engagement assessment matrix helps you to identify the current position of a stakeholder, their current disposition to the project. Are they engaged? No, they're unaware. They are not in a supporting role, they're not in a leading role, or it could be they're resistant. So based on where they are on that continuum of states across those five categories, you can decide how to engage a stakeholder or how to re-engage a stakeholder okay the next thing that PMI talk about is optimize alignment between stakeholder needs stakeholder needs expectations and project objectives so what does a stakeholder need what are the project objectives what are the expectations and you know the best way to do this it's the consistent engagement of stakeholders to ask questions simple questions such as are you satisfied with this what do you think about this does this meet your needs does this meet your expectations what do you think what do you expect I was talking to a project manager many years ago and I advised the project manager to engage the stakeholder early because a stakeholder was upset about something and it could have been called with a simple survey and when this project manager went to her boss, her boss said, I would rather not hear about it. What if they're mad? I'd rather hear about it at the end of the project. Really, that manager missed the boat. The whole idea about a survey is to check to ensure that people are engaged. Stakeholders are engaged as they should be. To make sure stakeholders are happy and satisfied like they should be. See what I mean? So my advice to any project manager working with stakeholders especially when there's not a very solid understanding between stakeholder and customer have more touch points that's what we do in the world of agile all right so optimize the alignment it takes an expert to optimize the alignment between the stakeholder needs the expectations and project objectives but it can be done that's why they pay the PMP certified project managers top dollar you got to use your interpersonal skills common sense right attentiveness leadership interpersonal and team skills and there you are you'll be able to do it optimize alignment all right the final thing we're going to talk about is the T word T for trust my mentor John Maxwell, he says, trust is like change in a leader's pocket. With it, he's solvent. But without it, he's bankrupt. You don't want to be bankrupt, so you've got to build trust as a project manager. You've got to earn trust. And how do you do that? By keeping your word, by showing truthfulness and honesty and care and empathy that's how you build trust so it says build trust and influence stakeholders to accomplish project objectives if stakeholders don't buy into you as a leader they ain't gonna do much they're probably not gonna do anything you know the idea that many people come into projects with is I'm gonna do the bare minimum the bare minimum needed from me but if you are able to influence effectively you're going to, in other words, lead stakeholders to do what they really should. And even more, that's what influence does. You know, my mentor, John Maxwell, again, another quote from John, he says, the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. That's it. So what do you think this is? Build trust and influence stakeholders. It's saying lead stakeholders to accomplish project objectives. Get the needle to move. And the way you do that is good old in personal skills and leadership. Leaders buy into you. I mean, people buy into the leader first and then the vision, right? People would buy into you first as a leader and then they'll buy into the vision 
And when they buy into you, when they know, like, and trust you, they begin to give you even more than you bargained for. They begin to give you more output, more information, more dedication. That's how the game is played. And one of the big things is likability. They don't like you. They're not going to buy into you. They're not going to give you what you're looking for. But if they do buy into you, the sky's the limit. Upwards and onward from there. Okay? So, my friends, today we talked about the aspect of stakeholder engagement. It's really stakeholder engagement. It says collaborate with stakeholders. Right? But there won't be any collaboration if there's no engagement. Okay, I hope this gave you some food for thought. In the world of Agile, it works similarly, but there are a few things I want to accentuate in the world of Agile, and one of them is the business people and developers working together daily. There's a direct conduit. You don't have to go through a project manager, so keep that in mind. And as far as who can communicate with stakeholders, anyone on the team at any point in time, the only thing we don't want is we don't want people to divert the team's focus. You know, we often call the Scrum Master a diversion shield for obvious reasons, right? We don't want people to bother the team when they're meant to be heads down, really focusing, doing something, right? We want the team to stay focused on what it should, and we don't want to derail them during the sprints, okay? But as far as working with stakeholders, stakeholders are our allies. When we talk about the sprint review, this is where we expect stakeholders to give feedback. Talk about even sometimes you could call stakeholders into a backlog refinement ceremony to get clarity on a story or an epic, an item, whatever it might be. All right, so that's it, my friends. I hope it gave you some food for thought. Don't forget, we've got questions for today that are going to be shown at some point. Always look below or just keep watching the video. They'll pop up open-ended questions for you to get good with today. Also, if you haven't purchased the PMP exam immersion book, make sure you do that because it will help you to really hone in on these areas. They are not expanded the way I'm expanding them in the PMBOK or Agile Guide. So it would make sense for you to get the uh, immersion book uh, in your efforts to success. All right? I wish you all the best, and I hope all of this made good sense. Take all right. Welcome to our question section. Let's take a look at these questions one by one. On your Agile project, when facilitating a meeting with stakeholders, it is critical to... All right. Is it hold the meeting in person, develop and distribute an agenda prior to the meeting? Is it minimize what talkative people can say? Or is it use technology to record the meeting so you can reference as needed? All right. You probably figured out the best answer to this as a good project manager is to always go prepared. So the best answer to this is develop and distribute an agenda prior to the meeting. That is best. All the other options are just that. You know, A is optional, D is optional. It's not a must. It's not critical to do that. Minimizing what talkative people can say is presumptuous, and that's not in the spirit of Agile. We can have time boxes for people, but saying, I'm going to minimize just what the talkative people say, <laughs> that's not in the spirit of good project management. Next, to increase the chances of achieving project success, the project manager should do all of the following except. All right, let's reveal the answer. The most sensible response to this is option C. 
And this is really just making sure you're reading. That's all. This is just a reading test at the end of the day for this question, because it says as much as possible, create conflicts. Why would you want to do that? Right. All right. Next question. You are developing management strategies to effectively engage stakeholders through the project lifecycle based on the analysis of their needs, interest and potential impact on project success. This is known as what? All right. And the answer is staring right at you at the bottom. That's going to be a freebie on me. <laughs> the obvious answer is plan stakeholder engagement. All right. These are just process teaser questions to make sure that you are process aware. They're not difficult, but they're here to call your attention to the importance of at least knowing what you are doing and perhaps even put in a face to the name as far as the questions are concerned. All right, so that was a bonus on me. Let's go to the next one. You are involved in the process of communicating and working with stakeholders to meet their needs or expectations, address issues as they occur, and foster appropriate stakeholder engagement in project activities throughout the project lifecycle. This is known as what? All right. So the key words here to reveal the answer, you have communicating and working with. These are things you do in executing. So it's not planning. It's not controlling. There's no such thing as control stakeholders. It's not monitoring stakeholder engagement because that would be checking versus doing. This is the actual doing. So the best answer is A. All right, let's take a look at this next question. An accepted deadline for project approaches. The project manager realizes there is a certain disagreement and misalignment of understanding on the project. Certain elements under discussion and in dispute have also arisen as a result. What should the project manager do? Is it process as potential conflicts in project documents updates? Is it document these as potential changes in the change log? Document these as issues in the issue log. Is it document this as conflict in the action item log? All right. So the best answer to this has nothing to do with the project documents updates. You wouldn't put conflicts in there, right? You wouldn't put conflicts in an action item log. Right. This misalignment is what it's saying. It's disagreement and misalignment doesn't necessarily mean full blown conflict. But whatever the case, this is not for the change log either. This is all about documenting disagreements and misalignment in an issue log. And these just need to be resolved. Life as usual for the project manager. All right, let's go to the next one. Before the phase has drawn to a close, the project manager meets with the project team to document issues and lessons learned from the current phase regarding project stakeholders. Which of the following is true? Okay, so this is a very process specific question. In order to answer this right, you really need to understand tools and techniques used in stakeholder management. So procurement documents is not an output of anything in procurement. So it's not a communication methods is a tool and technique, and it's not an input. It's not an artifact. It's not a, an, uh, an output um, of anything in stakeholder. Um, so saying communication methods is an input. Uh, this is a tool and technique, so it's it's not right in and of itself. So we have B and C. So approved change requests and updates are an input to this process being discussed. Or well, stakeholder engagement assessment matrix is a tool and technique. So think about it. Where do approved change requests go? They go to direct and manage project work, and they go to control quality, but they do not go to anywhere in stakeholder. So it's not C. 
just sheer common sense will tell you the SEAM, the Stakeholder Engagement Assessment Matrix, is used to really see has someone gone from a current to where they are desired? Have they gone from the C to the D? So the best answer is B. All right. Final question. Now, I do want to comment on the length of this question. You can expect questions of this length easily on your exam. I know there's people that have different exams, but you can actually expect a question this long. All right, so I'm going to let you read it. Read it for a bit. Hit the pause button if you need more time. And the best answer to this question, my friend, is nothing with two dimensions. So it's not a log. That's not, that's two dimensional, right? It's not stakeholder representation, and it's not stakeholder mapping. The obvious answer is stakeholder cube because it gives you that tip into a three dimensional model. The only three dimensional model listed here is the stakeholder cube. All right. I hope that makes sense for you. And I hope that gave you a little bit of trivia. Remember, this is not the be all end all. Okay. When it comes to the topic of stakeholder, there's a lot more to go into. Remember though, do read up the relevant chapter in the immersion book. If you need the immersion book, look for it below. Also remember that in the world of agile, you also have stakeholder engagement, business people and developers. They should work together daily throughout the project. So just remember that. Okay. And let's take a look at some of the open-ended questions that I would like for you to tackle today. And here are the stakeholder questions for day nine. Go over them. If you've got any questions about the questions, you know what to do. You put a link or you put a question to whatever you're referring to below so that I can answer that for you. All right. I hope you found this to be helpful. Remember, you should be reading the book. Highly advise because if you're not reading the book, you're only getting half of the story. You need a full story. So get the PMP exam immersion book and you'll be extremely glad because it has a lot of great detail. All right, my friends. Thanks for joining me on day nine. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.